I'm a public servant, and all I want to do is serve the people. How far will South Africa and its officials go to remind the world about human rights? While the West often does not remain silent about human rights, it consistently fails when taking action. However, South Africa, as a highly responsible country, is even using references to religion to discuss human rights. During a recent press conference, Dr. Naledi Pandor, South Africa's esteemed Minister of Foreign Affairs, invoked powerful hadiths urging support for the oppressed. This triggered the entire West because it knew the fingers would be pointed toward it. But what is the purpose of all this? Why is South Africa taking such actions? Let's find out. During a recent press conference, Dr. Nalidi Pandor, South Africa's esteemed Minister of Foreign Affairs, invoked powerful hadiths urging support for the oppressed. Her words echoed through the media, sparking contemplation and debate across the African continent. So even though I'm a little older now, if you will have me, I will always be there, inshallah, to serve the people. How did Dr. Naledi Pandor's invocation of hadith during a press conference resonate with audiences across the African continent? Dr. Naledi Pandor's invocation of hadith during a press conference undoubtedly resonated deeply with audiences across the African continent. Her decision to draw upon religious teachings in a public forum especially within the context of foreign affairs, likely sparked intrigue and contemplation among diverse communities. By referencing hadiths, Dr. Pandor conveyed a message that transcends religious boundaries, appealing to a wide audience regardless of their faith background. This inclusivity is particularly significant in Africa, a continent characterized by religious diversity, where Islam is prominent in many societies. Dr. Pander's choice to invoke hadiths acknowledges and respects the cultural and religious tapestry of the continent, thereby fostering a sense of unity and solidarity among diverse populations. Moreover, the content of the hadiths she referenced speaks directly to issues of justice and oppression, which are pertinent not only in South Africa, but also across Africa and the world. The hadiths emphasize the moral imperative to stand against oppression and support the oppressed, resonating with the struggles of many African communities who face political, economic, or social injustice. Dr. Pandor's invocation of hadiths likely resonated with audiences because it showcased her commitment to ethical leadership and moral integrity. By grounding her message in religious teachings, she positioned herself as a leader guided by principles of justice and compassion garnering respect and admiration from diverse segments of society. What prompted Dr. Pandor to draw upon religious teachings to convey her message of supporting the oppressed? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Dr. Naledi Pandor's decision to draw upon religious teachings, specifically hadiths, to support the oppressed likely stemmed from a combination of personal conviction, cultural context, and strategic communication. As a public figure and a leader, Dr. Pander may have deeply held personal beliefs that guide her actions and decisions. She may identify with the values and principles espoused in Islamic teachings, including justice, compassion, and solidarity with the oppressed. Her invocation of hadiths could reflect a genuine desire to align her public statements with her values and beliefs. South Africa, like many countries in Africa, is characterized by religious diversity, with Islam being one of the major faiths practiced by a significant portion of the population. As a prominent political figure in a multicultural society, Dr. Pandor may have recognized the importance of acknowledging and respecting diverse religious beliefs and cultural traditions. Drawing upon Islamic teachings allows her to connect with Muslim constituents and demonstrate an understanding of their worldview and values. In addition to personal conviction and cultural context, Dr. Pandor's decision to reference religious teachings could also be a strategic communication tactic aimed at resonating with a broader audience. By invoking hadiths, she taps into a rich religious and ethical tradition that transcends specific religious boundaries 
and speaks to universal principles of justice and empathy. This strategic choice allows her message to resonate with audiences beyond the Muslim community, positioning her as a leader committed to inclusive and principled governance. What key principles are united in the hadiths referenced by Dr. Pandor, and how do they beat religious boundaries? The hadiths referenced by Dr. Naladi Pandor convey several key principles that transcend religious boundaries and resonate with universal values of justice, compassion, and solidarity. The hadiths emphasize the moral imperative to oppose injustice in all its forms. By stating, anyone who walks with a wrongdoer in order to strengthen him knowing that all the while he is a wrongdoer has departed from Islam, Dr. Pandor underscores the importance of standing against oppression and injustice. This principle resonates with individuals of all faiths or those who do not adhere to religious beliefs as it speaks to humanity's innate sense of fairness and righteousness. The following hadith may be relevant for our discussion today. Anyone who walks with a wrongdoer in order to strengthen him, knowing that all the while he is a wrongdoer, has departed from Islam. Another key principle highlighted in the hadiths is the obligation to support the oppressed. Dr. Pandor quotes the Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him, who said, Assist your brother and sister Muslim whether he or she be an oppressor or the oppressed. This principle transcends religious boundaries by emphasizing the universal duty to stand in solidarity with those suffering unjustly, irrespective of their religious affiliation or background. It speaks to the innate desire for empathy and compassion towards others during hardship. And another hadith, the Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, Assist your brother and sister Muslim, whether he or she be an oppressor or the oppressed. The hadiths also highlight the importance of accountability and responsibility in addressing oppression. Dr. Pandor quotes the Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him, who advised, Assisting an oppressor is by forbidding and withholding that person from oppression. This principle emphasizes the proactive role that individuals and communities must play in holding oppressors accountable for their actions and striving to prevent further injustices. It encourages individuals to take a stand against wrongdoing and to actively promote justice and fairness in society, regardless of religious affiliation. When asked, but how shall we assist the oppressor the Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, Assisting an oppressor is by forbidding and withholding that person from oppression. How do these teachings provide a moral framework for individuals and nations to address injustice and oppression? The teachings from the Hadiths, referenced by Dr. Naledi Pandora, provide a robust moral framework for individuals and nations to address injustice and oppression by offering guidance on principles, actions, and responsibilities. Let's explore how these teachings serve as a moral compass. The Hadiths emphasize the principles of justice and compassion as foundational elements of ethical conduct. These teachings establish a moral imperative to strive for fairness, equity, and empathy in all interactions and societal structures by urging individuals to oppose injustice and support the oppressed. This principle is the cornerstone of a moral framework guiding individuals and nations to prioritize the well-being and rights of all people, especially those marginalized or oppressed. The hadiths highlight the responsibility of individuals and communities to take action in the face of injustice. These teachings emphasize the importance of personal agency and moral courage by admonishing against complicity with oppressors and encouraging active support for the oppressed. They remind individuals and nations that silence or inaction in the face of injustice is equivalent to collaboration. Everyone must uphold principles of justice and righteousness in their words and deeds. The Hadiths stress the importance of holding oppressors accountable for their actions and advocating for systemic change. By advising individuals to withhold support from oppressors and actively challenge oppression, these teachings empower individuals to confront injustice at individual and institutional levels. They emphasize the role of advocacy, 
activism, and collective action in addressing systemic inequalities and promoting social justice, thereby providing a roadmap for individuals and nations to effect meaningful change. These are just two hadiths that suggest that Muslims cannot and should not collaborate with those who oppress others. And more importantly, that we should refrain from supporting oppressors. Lastly, the teachings from the Hadiths promote unity and solidarity among diverse communities in the fight against oppression by emphasizing the duty to support the oppressed regardless of their religious affiliation or background. These teachings foster a sense of common humanity and shared responsibility for social justice. They encourage individuals and nations to overcome divisions and work together to pursue a more equitable and compassionate world, reinforcing the importance of collective action and mutual support in addressing injustice and oppression. She also talked about the impact of nations standing up to oppressive regimes. So, as Dr. Pandor's remarks highlight, what ethical dilemmas arise when individuals or nations collaborate with oppressive regimes? Dr. Naledi. Pandor's remarks regarding collaboration with oppressive regimes shed light on several ethical dilemmas individuals or nations may face when engaging with such regimes. One of the primary ethical dilemmas Dr. Pandor highlighted is complicity in injustice. When individuals or nations collaborate with oppressive regimes, they risk perpetuating human rights abuses, suppressing dissent, and causing systemic injustice. This raises profound moral questions about the ethical responsibility of individuals and nations to refrain from supporting regimes that violate fundamental human rights and freedoms. Another ethical dilemma arises from the tension between moral integrity and strategic interests. While collaboration with oppressive regimes may serve strategic objectives such as geopolitical stability, economic interests, or security considerations, it often comes at the expense of compromising moral principles and values. This dilemma forces individuals and nations to weigh the short-term benefits of collaboration against the long-term costs of perpetuating injustice and undermining human rights. Collaboration with oppressive regimes can also challenge democratic values and principles. In democratic societies, individuals and governments are expected to uphold freedom, equality, and justice principles. However, collaborating with oppressive regimes may involve disregarding human rights violations, silencing dissent, or supporting authoritarian practices, thereby undermining the very foundation of democracy. This dilemma raises questions about the compatibility of democratic values with pragmatic considerations in foreign policy. Collaborating with oppressive regimes risks legitimizing and empowering authoritarian leaders and institutions. By engaging in diplomatic relations, economic partnerships, or military cooperation with oppressive regimes, individuals or nations may inadvertently lend legitimacy and credibility to regimes that systematically violate human rights and suppress democratic freedoms. This dilemma highlights the moral imperative to refrain from bolstering oppressive regimes and to instead stand in solidarity with the oppressed. These hadiths very clearly also enjoin us to support the oppressed in their struggles and engage in activities that will hold the oppressors accountable for their actions. Finally, collaboration with oppressive regimes can have broader global stability and security repercussions. By supporting or disregarding oppression, individuals or nations risk fueling resentment, radicalization, and conflict within oppressed populations, which can have destabilizing effects regionally and internationally. This dilemma highlights the interconnectedness of human rights, security, and stability, highlighting the need for a principled approach to foreign policy that prioritizes ethical considerations alongside strategic interests. According to Dr. Pandor's interpretation of Hadith, how does collaboration with oppressors contradict principles of justice and empathy? Dr. Naledi Pandor's remarks on the ethical dilemmas of collaborating with oppressive regimes shed light on the profound contradictions arising when individuals or nations engage with oppressors. Her interpretation of hadiths underscores the inherent conflict between complicity with oppressors and fundamental principles of justice and empathy. 
Collaborating with oppressive regimes often involves disregarding or actively participating in acts of injustice, repression, and human rights violations. Dr. Pandor's invocation of hadiths highlights the moral imperative to oppose oppression and support the oppressed. By collaborating with oppressors, individuals or nations, effectively betray the principles of justice enshrined in religious teachings and ethical frameworks. They become complicit in perpetuating systems of oppression and denying justice to those who are unjustly treated. Complicity with oppressors necessitates a disregard for the suffering and humanity of the oppressed. Dr. Pandor's interpretation of hadiths emphasizes the duty to stand in solidarity with the oppressed and extend compassion and support to marginalized or persecuted people. By collaborating with oppressors, individuals or nations, prioritize self-interest, political expediency, or economic gain over the well-being and rights of vulnerable populations. This abandonment of empathy contradicts the core values of compassion, empathy, and solidarity, central to ethical conduct and religious teachings. Dr. Pandor's remarks highlight the erosion of moral integrity when individuals or nations align themselves with oppressive regimes. Collaboration with oppressors compromises one's moral principles, integrity, and credibility, tarnishing one's reputation and legitimacy in the eyes of others. It becomes increasingly challenging to uphold notions of righteousness, fairness, and ethical conduct while actively supporting or enabling oppressive actions. This erosion of moral integrity undermines individual or national credibility and erodes trust and legitimacy in broader social and political contexts. Ultimately, collaboration with oppressors perpetuates cycles of injustice, inequality, and suffering. Dr. Pando's interpretation of hadiths emphasizes the imperative to challenge oppression and hold oppressors accountable for their actions. However, collaboration with oppressive regimes enables the continuation of systemic injustices, exacerbating human suffering and denying individuals their fundamental rights and freedoms. This perpetuation of injustice contradicts the moral imperative to strive for a more just, equitable, and compassionate world. Also, in what ways do the hadiths referenced by Dr. Pander guide navigating complex situations where the oppressor and oppressed are intertwined? The hadiths referenced by Dr. Naledi. Pandor offer invaluable guidance for navigating complex situations where the oppressor and the oppressed are intertwined. These teachings provide a moral compass to steer individuals and nations toward righteous action amidst challenging circumstances. The hadiths emphasize the importance of upholding justice and opposing oppression unequivocally, regardless of the identities involved. When the oppressor and oppressed are intertwined, individuals may be torn between conflicting loyalties or interests. However, the hadiths remind us that justice must prevail above all else. By forbidding complicity with oppressors and advocating for the rights of the oppressed, individuals can navigate these complexities while remaining true to their moral principles. Accountability becomes paramount in complex situations involving intertwined oppressor-oppressed dynamics. The hadiths encourage individuals to hold oppressors accountable for their actions and to actively challenge injustice. This guidance highlights the importance of accountability mechanisms, such as legal proceedings, advocacy efforts, and public scrutiny in addressing systemic oppression. By advocating for transparency, accountability, and justice, individuals can navigate the complexities of intertwined oppressor-oppressed dynamics while working toward meaningful change. Despite the complexities of intertwined oppressor-oppressed dynamics, the hadiths remind us of the universal duty to extend compassion and support to all individuals regardless of their roles or affiliations. Dr. Pandor's invocation of hadiths underscores the importance of assisting both the oppressor and the oppressed, albeit in different ways. While the oppressed require support and advocacy, the oppressor may benefit from counsel and warning to cease their oppressive actions. Individuals can navigate these complexities with integrity and empathy by maintaining a compassionate approach grounded in ethical principles. The Hadiths advocate for constructive engagement and dialogue to resolve conflicts and address injustices. In situations where the oppressor and oppressed are intertwined, constructive dialogue may offer a pathway toward reconciliation and resolution. 
by fostering open communication, understanding, and empathy, individuals can work towards dismantling oppressive systems and fostering harmonious relationships based on justice and mutual respect. But how can individuals and nations effectively support the oppressed while upholding principles of righteousness and justice? Supporting the oppressed while upholding principles of righteousness and justice requires a multifaceted approach that combines advocacy, empowerment, and accountability. Individuals and nations can raise awareness about the plight of the oppressed by sharing their stories, amplifying their voices, and shedding light on systemic injustices. Through advocacy campaigns, social media, and public discourse, they can educate others about the realities faced by the oppressed and mobilize support for their cause. Offering practical assistance to the oppressed is essential for alleviating their suffering and empowering them to advocate for their rights. This assistance can take various forms, including humanitarian aid, legal support, access to health care and education, and shelter for those fleeing persecution. By addressing their immediate needs, individuals and nations can provide tangible support while upholding principles of compassion and solidarity. Individuals and nations can advocate for local, national, and international policy changes to address the root causes of oppression and injustice. This may involve lobbying for legislative reforms, supporting initiatives that promote human rights and social justice, and holding governments and institutions accountable for their actions. By advocating for structural change, they can create long-term solutions that uphold principles of righteousness and justice for all. Facilitating dialogue and reconciliation between oppressors and the oppressed is essential for fostering understanding, healing, and sustainable peace. Individuals and nations can support initiatives that promote dialogue, mediation, and conflict resolution, bringing together diverse stakeholders to address grievances and build bridges of trust and cooperation. By promoting dialogue and reconciliation, they can contribute to restoring justice and creating inclusive societies based on mutual respect and dignity. Perhaps most importantly, individuals and nations must stand in unwavering solidarity with the oppressed, even in adversity. This means actively challenging oppressive systems, speaking out against injustice, and advocating for the rights and dignity of all people, regardless of their background or circumstances. By standing in solidarity with the oppressed, they demonstrated their commitment to principles of righteousness and justice and inspire others to join the struggle for a more equitable and compassionate world. And what actionable steps does Dr. Pandor's invocation of Hadith suggest for holding oppressors accountable and advocating for the rights of the oppressed? Dr. Naledi Pandor's invocation of Hadiths offers actionable steps for holding oppressors accountable and advocating for the rights of the oppressed. The hadiths emphasize the importance of forbidding and withholding support from oppressors. This actionable step involves actively speaking out against oppression and refusing to condone or enable oppressive actions through collaboration or silence. Individuals and nations can hold oppressors accountable by publicly denouncing their actions, boycotting institutions that perpetuate oppression, and withholding financial or diplomatic support that sustains oppressive regimes. Dr. Pandor's invocation of hadiths underscores the duty to advocate for justice on behalf of the oppressed. This actionable step involves actively campaigning for the rights and dignity of the oppressed through legal, political, and social channels. Individuals and nations can support legal initiatives, petitions, and advocacy campaigns to address systemic injustices, hold perpetrators accountable, and secure redress for victims of oppression. The Hadith suggests the importance of international pressure in holding oppressors accountable for their actions. This actionable step involves mobilizing diplomatic efforts, international coalitions, and multilateral mechanisms to pressure oppressive regimes and compel them to respect human rights and the rule of law. Individuals and nations can advocate for sanctions, diplomatic isolation, and international intervention in cases of severe human rights violations, thereby amplifying the voices of the oppressed and increasing the cost of oppression for perpetrators. Dr. Pander's invocation of hadiths emphasizes the significance of grassroots movements in advocating for the rights of the oppressed. This actionable step involves providing support, solidarity, and resources to grassroots organizations, civil society groups, and community activists working to combat oppression 
and promote social justice. Individuals and nations can amplify the voices of grassroots movements, provide funding and technical assistance, and facilitate networking and collaboration to strengthen their impact and effectiveness. Finally, Dr. Pandor's invocation of hadiths underscores the importance of fostering accountability mechanisms to ensure that oppressors are held accountable for their actions. This actionable step involves supporting initiatives that promote transparency, accountability, and oversight in governance, law enforcement, and judicial systems. Individuals and nations can advocate for establishing independent commissions, truth and reconciliation processes, and mechanisms for prosecuting perpetrators of human rights abuses, thereby promoting accountability and redress for victims of oppression. Do you know what issue she was trying to refer to? Do you agree with her words? In the comment section, let us know why South Africa is concerned about human rights while the entire West is giving it a cold shoulder. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.